The Lost City is a world in Plants vs Zombies 2 that is so utterly easy, even your dog could do it after you give him a controller and at least two lines of ketamine. Nevertheless, let's enter the Lost City and see what this filler ass world has to offer. But first, why don't you subscribe so we can pester EA to reviving the Garden Warfare franchise. The Lost City begins on day one, where we are introduced to this world's main gimmick, sun platforms, that you can plant to any plant, or in this case bean, on one of these platforms and they will occasionally give you 50 sun as if they were a sunflower. This paired with the strange abundance of plant food this world gives you and you'll pretty much sail through this day, beans or no beans. We move on to day two, where we are already met with pre-placed plants. Day 2 is a pretty easy level, but we are introduced to one of the first of a few new zombie variants, the Wedgie Zombie, who gets castrated in the most painful way I could ever imagine. Besides that, Day 2 was a breeze due to once again, the abundance of sun. Day 3 is a conveyor belt level, so instead of just skipping over it, I wanted to provide you with a bean fact. Did you know, in contrast to what my comment section says, Beans are beans, not legumes, but beans. Why? Because I said so. On day four, we get back to beaning all over the place, and we are introduced to yet another new zombie type, the shovel zombie, who at first petrified me. He had me timbers well and truly shivered hard. But then I learned if I just placed a bean sprout or a chili bean directly on top of him, then he would just have to attack it normally instead of using his stupid little shovel. Regardless, later on in this world the shovel zombie would in fact shove his shovel so far up my ass that he would turn me into one of those little propeller hats. Day 5 was yet another conveyor belt level, so here I decided to bring back another one of Hui's gaming hot takes. Did you know? I don't think Breath of the Wild deserved game of the year. Moving on to day 6, we are tested with everything we have learned in the Lost City thus far, and don't get me wrong, it did get kind of tough at a point. But the credit card effect carried me through, all with ease and without losing a single lawnmower. On day 7, we are introduced to yet another zombie type, the Umbrella Zombie, who I have absolutely no clue what they do in the slightest. I mean, maybe they have a slightly higher health pool, but it makes absolutely zero difference to a gamer of my calibre. Now is also the time to mention that this whole world was streamed over at twitch.tv forward slash hui. So why don't you come on by and try and gaslight me with the rest of my Twitch chat? Moving on to day 8, we have to once again defend Dave's stupid flower beds. Well, you see, Dave's wife died years ago, and these flowers are the last memory that Dave has of her, which is why we need to defend them at all costs. However, I could not give a single fuck, so I let all these zombies dance all over them. In all seriousness, I didn't mean to fail this day, I just fell into a false sense of security and let my guard down. On the next attempt, I kicked this day's ass. Day 9 was yet another conveyor belt level, featuring our favourite dragon, Dragon These Nuts. Day 10 was another day with an abundance of sun platforms, making this day an utter breeze. However, these shovel zombies are getting kinda close to me. It's good that I finally found a use for the chili bean, cause the chili bean is carrying hard here with this shovel zombie. Moving on to day 11. Day 11 was a day that I will remember. On this day, we are introduced to the Mosquito Zombie. These zombies are fucking stupid. They have twice the health of a regular zombie, and they just completely ignore all of my beans on the ground, making plants like the bean sprout completely obsolete. In fact, the only way I could attack them at this point is with my goopy goobers, so I needed to make damn well sure I'm prepared in the lanes they're coming in. Regardless, I managed to beat day 11 first try, even after losing a mower to these flying, flapping fucks. Day 12 was yet another day that I somehow managed to fail. An otherwise simple day that lured me into a false sense of security. What happened here is one gargantua came running down the middle lane. Then I thought I was safe, I thought it wouldn't happen again, I thought I did not need to plant that much more in the middle lane. But then, another gargantua came stumbling in right after, and I did not have the firepower or plant food to take out this big boy. Meaning he came over to me and I gave him some more brain. But as with other levels, I beat this day on my second attempt without much hassle. At least that's what I would be saying, but this day also had a side objective of gathering 5,000 sun. 
I knew this would be possible to do bean only, since on the second attempt I got to the end of the day with only 50 sun to go. This failure was crushing, I could have wallowed for hours, since this day is a long one. But I went back into it and I managed to end up barely, just barely scraping by on my third attempt. Now coming up is a lot of gimmick levels that had absolutely nothing to do with the challenge, so it's time to speed through them. Days 13 and 14 were conveyor belt levels, so I'ma just skip them, but day 15 was a defend the endangered plant day, which I thought would be a lot harder, until I remembered the ultimate power of my beans, which led me to complete this day first try. Moving on to day 16, it was another conveyor belt level, so once again, we're ignoring it. On day 17, we are introduced to yet another zombie type, the camping zombie. This little shit carries his tent around, and just like it's a clown- The camping zombie carries his tent around like it's a clown car, and releases an unlimited amount of zombies. It's a good thing I gave him gas the second he spawns in, and dealt with him like that, and all of his posse with just one chili bean. The chili bean once again carries. Besides this new zombie type, day 17 was a breeze. Day 18 was another conveyor belt level, and days 19 and 20 were easy due to the abundance of sun. This was once again followed up by yet another gimmick level, with day 21. However, I actually really like this one because of the frog plants. I don't quite know what they're called, but I absolutely love them. They're just silly little guys, and now I want to see a Plants vs Zombies challenge run with only frogs. Chat, get it done. Day 22 was yet another gimmick level with some trap tiles. Some would say it's one of the very easiest days in this whole game, but guess what? I failed. Some could say I'm a bit of a dumbass. But once chat told me how to utilise these tiles to my advantage, I actually really enjoyed this day because of how different it was. I just wish the Lost City utilised gimmick levels in a more creative way that wasn't another stupid conveyor belt level. Since day 23 was piss easy, we move on to day 24. There's nothing that notable about this day, but I did learn I'm about as blind as your nan and completely missed this shovel zombie coming in my bottom row. Besides that, the day was completed on a second attempt. The rest of the days were easy, that is until I reached day 27. Day 27 is without a doubt the hardest day in this world. The reason for this? Well, there is once again another zombie type that's pretty prevalent here. The scientist zombie, or what I choose to call the old flatulent fuck zombie. What he does is he consumes the sun like it's his morning pills and ass blasts my plants into oblivion with just one squirt of his laser. With him blasting my beans into oblivion, he makes enough room every time for his good old pal the mosquito zombie to come and eat my ass time and time again. This day was pretty gruelling, and it took multiple attempts, but in the end I managed to defend all the rows and let the lawnmowers do the rest. These old flatulent fucks are the most irritating zombie in the game thus far. I hate them so very much, however I do like their design, they, they do look very uh, very dashing, some would say. The next challenge didn't come until day 29. The reason for the challenge on this day was every single plant and zombie killed each other, except for one little lone gargantua who wanted revenge for the massacring of his brothers. However, quaking in fear live on stream, my PC decided to end itself rather than facing the consequences that this gargantua had in mind. My PC always crashes at the worst time. After fixing this technical issue by doing absolutely nothing, I went live again and kicked this day's ass. I should probably buy a new power supply, but I can't be asked and I can't afford it, so I'm just going to keep on going with this one until it explodes. Day 30 and 31 were all done with ease, and then we move on to shitting on Dr. Zomboss, who didn't exactly go down easy this time, he actually put up a fair fight, because the game decided to use these trap platforms creatively for once. I really enjoyed this fight, because once again it was something different, but just like your dad getting milk from the store, he eventually vanished into nothingness. This world was pretty damn long, 30 something days I'm sure, I think that is a bit too long for a Plants vs Zombies 2 world, especially since it doesn't use creative gimmicks that often, but when it does, it does. I hope the worlds aren't this long in the future, but I'm really excited for the far future, so I can finally, finally bring out the laser beam. I hope you guys enjoyed this world, and I'll see you next time, where hopefully, it's not as bland. <laughs> anyway, see you guys soon.